Warning, the following is entirely satirical and should not be taken as truth or fact. Styles Rebel Radio and the Rebel Podcast do not own any copyright material that may be included in this broadcast. Viewer discretion is advised. Is it pounds or is that euros? Euros. I don't fuck. What's the difference? It's all fucking Looney Style? Tunes money. What's the difference? Honestly, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Suspend the show right now. You're going to zip line directly into the harpoon? Yeah, what do you know about planes? I know a lot about planes. Buckle in, dude. It's going to suck. Put your hands on the screen. How did they find out? It's... Who was the one? This show has gotten infinitely more gay. The mystical land of New Jersey. Uh, I don't understand how the laws yeah. in this country work anymore. Yeah. I'm going to ask with you guys. Uh, today we're going to talk about the fact that Will Ferrell really hasn't made any good movies since Elf. You know what? <laughs> All right. Right before we went on, I'll just I'll break the fourth wall a little bit. All right, I'll let the listener in on on a little. Um, this is a uh, uh, you know behind the behind breaking news behind the ice. This is a uh, behind the I scenes. I don't know behind the scenes. <laughs> um, I was saying that I thought Elf was Will Ferrell's last great comedy movie. Little did I know Elf came out in two thousand three. I thought it had come out circa like two thousand ten. So that's you on me. Elf came out in 2010. That's on me. The other guys came out in 2010, and he looks exactly the same in both of those movies. Will Ferrell looking ageless does not dictate that Elf came out in 2010. I will say. Talladega Nights, Step Brothers. I saw the internet clip of Will Ferrell yelling. Blades of Glory. When did Blades of Glory come like out? Like 2005 or six. 2007. Well, I was pretty close. All right, listen, clearly I don't know my Will Ferrell content that well, and I need to study up. In the meantime, welcome back to the Rebel Radio Show. We're live <laughs> on Cutting Uncensored on WSRR Radio. To my right, Shaney. Hey, everyone. On the board is Jules. Howdy. I'm Radio's Rebel DJ style. What are we opening with today? I'll tell you. It's tell me. It's something interesting. So uh, there is a chain of Japanese supermarkets known as... Uh, Aeon, 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 A, 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 E, O, N, Aeon. Um, sure. And they are testing a um, AI enhanced uh, facial tracking technology that um, it is called. So, created by InstaVR, the quote, Mr. Smile solution aims to gauge and standardize the smiles of customer service employees across Eon's 240 stores. The tool claims to be able to analyze over 450 elements, including facial expression, voice volume, and greeting tone. The AI-powered program then uses the data to rate the customer face employee's overall attitude. Um that's terrifying. So, so that's they're, the they're thing. They're basically just scanning people's faces and listening to them to see if they're greeting nicely and smiling. And smiling yes, and, and they have a, a happy tone in their voice. It's calm and soothing. Um, <laughs> I forget where I read it, but they said that they were testing it in eight of their stores. Um, and so it's clearly just in like a beta phase sort of thing. You know, it's it's they're just a trial run but oh yeah okay here uh, a three month a three month trial conducted by aeon across eight of its stores the supermarket chain reported that the attitudes of its customer service staff had improved by 1.6 times how the did it though how the are hell? they acting they yeah just they're, they're acting be, uh, on like recording so they're gonna smile you guys have to smile and be happy or you'll get fired yeah good news um, everybody's happier now. <laughs> yeah, we suddenly found out that everyone happened to be happier. Yeah, hey guys, just so you know, next week the uh, smile cameras are going to be uh, implemented in our stores. Just what because the fuck they're are the smiling, smile <laughs> just because they're smiling doesn't mean they're happy. Yeah, no, this is scary. <laughs> That's this is statistically not true. Anyone who smiles is happy. In the in, I love the uh, the headline. It it opens with sinister or revolutionary. No, sinister. I it's, pick. I pick sinister. Yeah, yeah I 100%. pick sinister. In what way is this revolutionary? Also, like, who does this benefit? It, either they're having a serious problem in store where they're like, nobody is yeah. taking this job seriously. Yeah, it's it's really affecting the customers negatively. What's it called a uh, uh, staff morale yeah. is down. This is not how you fix staff morale. This is not how you fix staff. I'm morale. not a have big a picnic. Well, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not a big proponent of the free pizza. No, method. I was going to say I would rather have two large pizzas and a two liter. Of yeah, Coke. But I don't care. Like that's, that's better than the smile cam. <laughs> that's way better than the smile cams. Eat their pizza and also unionize. Imagine, uh, <laughs> imagine. 
HR comes in and is like, hey, we, we've seen that uh, morale is a bit down lately. Uh, we're we're going to implement these new cameras. And, uh, you know, just to let you guys know, they will be tracking your face and we're going to be using AI. And to, they're going to give you a rating. Yeah, they're going to rate you based on your smile. So um, be happy, everyone. All right. See you next week. Imagine working retail oh, yeah. and, and you check someone out and you're forced to smile and sound polite and happy the entire time. And then afterwards, they check out, they leave and just on your screen. It's just 84. Yeah. <laughs> 62%. Thumbs <laughs> down. This is in China? Uh, Japan. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask if it would affect their social credit score as well. <laughs> the worst Hopefully part not. is, like, they're not only scanning the workers. They're scanning all the, like, customers. Yeah, but the to... customers don't get rated. <laughs> See, but, but, they but how gauge. do we know that? Yeah. How do we know that? You are a bad customer. If they, smile yeah, more. Yeah. You've been banned from Eon. Yeah, because <laughs> Good you day, have sir. a you you have like a the photos on the wall of shoplifters. Wall. It's like non smilers. It's like a it's like bowling alley TVs where it's yeah. just on it's just your face on the yeah. screen. You're like, well, guess I can't go into this Eon anymore. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, it's just very scary. And I mean, it's one of those things where I guess it's only in eight of their stores and they are saying that it's a three month trial run. So like at the end of the world, but still super dystopian and creepy. Still enough to make me quit. Right, right. Not cool. Yeah, I wouldn't stay here. Right. This is not a place I want to work. I would I would quit immediately. Yeah. Well, I would never let them see me smile. <laughs> I also like to think that HR didn't know about this. Uh, and like this is just something that upper management pushed through and one day HR is like, guys, we... We have to smile. How do we? We you have can't to. just make people smile. Yeah, the like two, this. the two HR employees talking in their office, like, how do we let them know? <laughs> how do we tell them? What is that they're looking at the camera? It's so, like, the monitor is like tracking their face as they're moving the camera. They're like, how do we tell them? <laughs> they're smiling, just kind of talking out of there. They see the number rating go up. And yeah. It turns from like a, a sad emoji to a happy emoji. <laughs> Like, we're fucked. <laughs> how do we tell the how do we tell the staff? <laughs> the the best thing I can relate this to, and it, it was such a weird concept, and I've only ever seen it once in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad used to do karaoke DJing, and he bought a new system once, and it was right when the karaoke system switched majorly from CD to digital, huh? where you have everything on a hard drive. Right. So it was like his first brand new system, and you could punch everything in with the remote, and it was all codes. You didn't need CD numbers and stuff like that. But it had a feature in it mm -hmm. that, and like, there's no plausible way that this could have worked with the system that was, so I don't know like how it was done. Um, but after you would sing, there was a feature that was automatically enabled that would give you a score. Oh, and I'm like, this isn't how karaoke That's works. That's weird. No, yeah, this is such a non-incentive for right. karaoke. Right. This makes me not want to go up and do karaoke <laughs> if I'm gonna get rated. Yeah. yeah, you'd go up and sing and be like, "Fucking go up there, sing Bon Jovi," and then the song would end and it'd be like, "84." <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Number one, how did you score? How? That? What was the rating system? <laughs> <laughs> it says, "Uh, it says here talking back on the the Japanese smile device, the, the smile camera, Mister Hap, Mister Mister Smile, Mister Smile." Uh, I hate, by the way, when companies do that. Like Mr. Coffee, terrible name yeah, for a company. Yeah, Mr. Smile, yeah, that's dystopian. It's in scary. Itself. I don't like that. That is straight out of Fallout. That yeah. is some Mr. Handy ass shit right there. <laughs> it says, uh, testing of the tool reported a 13 to 15 percent reduction in stress. A 40 to 50 smaller, per, or 40 per, to 50 percent smaller increase in average handling time. Uh, and they want to get them out of there quicker. Yeah improved customer satisfaction as well i would not i would be less satisfied if i walked in and everyone had like a dystopian ass smile like purge fucking right. smile on their face hello welcome to eon yeah and they all say hello in unison that's like a freaking idiocracy yeah welcome to costco i love you <laughs> <laughs> buddy we can't even have a walmart greeters anymore now all yeah, right yeah this ain't gonna fly I just don't. Someone maybe maybe that's a cultural divide. Maybe that's just an American thing that we don't want to associate with people when we go to the store. So here it says, uh, however, when uh, piloting the solution, First Horizon Bank faced the social media criticism of uh, of the additional feature that it included. The bank chose to show agents um, family photos of their with their favorite songs during the breaks which some social media users described as bleak, grim, and reminiscent of a Black Mirror plot. Wait, so in order to make them smile more, the company is putting together montages of photos of their family along with their favorite music between transactions? 
Yeah, I get the. I that need is, to, This is the yeah. most dystopian thing I've ever heard. I need I think. to make sure I understand. The bank chose to show agents a montage of family photos with their favorite songs during their break. So it was tested at a bank, yeah. and the bank decided to on the screens do this between additional. transactions. Okay, that's so. That's this terrible. is so weird. Why is this? And yeah, of course it's going to get like a criticism on social media. People calling it a Black Mirror plot. It feels like a Black Mirror plot. That's so... I got a real, real simple solution here. And I'm not saying like, maybe this is a corporate decision. Three letters. (laughs) E-M-P. Later. (laughs) I'm not saying maybe this is a corporate thing as as in terms of specificity. Specificity? Specificity? Specificity. I don't freaking know. In terms of being specific. (laughs) I'm not saying this is a corporate solution. All I'm saying is when I used to work at GameStop, the day went by a lot faster when I worked alone and could just bring a speaker and play my music in the store. Mm-hmm. I think that's all you need. I don't think you need to show me fucking montages with a Spotify playlist in the background between transactions. Right. I think like if you just let me bring a speaker. Dude, call me crazy. If you. Dude, call me Kevin on YouTube. Dude, don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> um, No, if you just let workers like use their phone but make sure to track their productivity yeah i think then you're fine and if their productivity just drops below a certain number can them sure yeah. I, I i think that would bro- like boost staff morale and just being able to because there are a lot of places that don't and i would assume that this is a place like that probably. I, I don't know but it seems to me like they're probably not allowed to be walk like having their phones on them right Give them their. It sounds so. Dy- Again, it seems like a dystopian solution to a dystopian problem. But like, give them their phones, and they'll probably be a little happier that they can like have the freedom of texting my friend back or listening to my music in my AirPods or whatever the case may be. You know, like it's just in I, weird, strange, strange times, strange place. I think this does to- nothing but hurt the customer, though. Is my big thing. Like yeah. the last thing I want when I go to any store is a salesman. Yeah. yeah, that is right. the last thing I like. If I'm walking around Home Depot and I have three different people asking me if I need help finding something, no. If I did, I would approach you and say, "Hey, right. can I find this item?" Right. Or I'd open my phone and look on the app at where it's located. Right. Like if I don't need the interaction, if I don't need assistance, then don't assist me. Yeah. And I think a lot of corporate places also don't have that mentality or they aren't taught that mentality in business school it's taught the opposite of like well you want to be presenting yourself to the customer and and doing this thing because i'm even working at gamestop again uh we had a very when i first started we had a very corporate like you can tell he had some kind of business management experience or something like Mm -hmm. that but he was our, our our head guy and he was very salesman and everything he did is like, okay, these are the three points you got to hit when you talk to the customer. And as soon as they walk in the door, you greet them. And then five minutes later, if they haven't found anything, go up to them and say this. And then you make sure you stock up on, right. on the front of the shelf because this is the, the impulse purchase buys. I'm like, no one wants that experience when they go to the store. I think salesmen will very well could be the first job replaced by AI. Mm-hmm. And it seems like even now, as you're explaining how you'll either come up to someone or you'll go on your phone and yeah. look. It's dawning that like the the age of the salesman is definitely over and it seems now more like like one of those retro I yeah uh, societal idealisms that we still keep around. I, I can't think of a good one off the top of my head, but like it just seems like it the the idea of like a, a door to door knife salesman. Type you can shit. just go on Amazon, buy knives. What Type about shit. The, the people that stand in Walmart that try to sell you a better electric bill or whatever? I just, right. I just always think that's a cult. I'm going to be honest. And I've known people that did that, and I just I think it's a cult. But like the, the time of a salesperson is over, and you really don't need sale. You don't need people pitching you products because you know. You know what you want, fucking, or if you don't, you're going to go up Arthur to Fucking Arthur Miller over here, death of a salesman, huh? No. Human interaction has gone out the window. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk to people. Nobody, like, you, like, literally, like you said, you don't want to talk right. to a salesman. And what is a salesman supposed to do? They're so, supposed to pitch you a product. You. Well, okay. They're immediately going to walk up to you and want to pitch you something. They're going to have a, a, a... A monologue. Right, a monologue already. And so it's like, that time for that sort of interaction... Yeah is definitely over now. We, we have a minute real quick before we go to break. I want to touch on this yeah. because I think the, there's a very big caveat to that. 
I think you're completely right and the model of sales pitching is over and it's very much a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. However, sales can be very good and very fun if you're not a fucking used car dealer. I agreed. We'll be back. 216-859-8699 if you want to try and sell me something. Hi, this is Melissa. And hey, it's Matt. Coming at you from Synergy Music Studio. We are a recording and production studio located on the south side near Chicago. Check us out online at SynergyMusicStudio.com. We offer recording, mixing, and mastering. And follow us on Instagram at Synergy Music Studio. Rock hard. Everybody, this is the Pidge, and I'm here to tell you that I hate everything that you send me, but I love it at the same time because holy shit, uh, that's all I gotta say to that. If you guys don't know me, I'm the Pidge, and I'm one of the members of the Styles Rebel Radio page. You probably won't hear me as much on the Rebel Podcast because I'm away, away, away in Arizona, but every month I come out with the show, submit your stuff into the Styles Rebel Radio Discord page under the pigeonhole section, and it will be featured on the next show. Unless there's racial slurs. See ya. Want to listen on the go? WSRR Radio streams live 24-7, 365, absolutely free with the Live 365 app. Styles Rebel Radio. Read the sign. 15 for dudes, girls get in free past 7. You know, I've always uh always kind of envy people that are like naturally good at trades, like electricity, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Like I, I can pick up a little bit here and there. I can change an outlet or right. switch or something like that or right. fix a sink. Um, but this dude installed a meter in a wall behind a picture for the dude living above him in his duplex to the point where he did not pay for electricity for over a year and was just letting his upstairs neighbor flip the bill. He put his electrician stat all the way up to a hundred and all of his <laughs> other stats down to, down to zero. <laughs> yes. This guy, where's the stats? Uh, not in America. Yeah. I thought it was in the UK cause it's pounds. Um, it is in is it pounds or is that euros? Euros. I don't. Fuck, what's the difference? It's all fucking Looney Style? Tunes money. What's the difference? Honestly, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> um, e, from Tayport in Fife. Yeah, I don't. Fife, Fife is Europe, right? It, yeah. It, it doesn't say where this is. This is the BBC. Come on. Well, it's British, right? Yeah. And so he's he's from the UK. Fucking idiot. Uh, that's his first problem. Honestly. Uh, <laughs> Stupid bitch. Anyway, this dude in the UK fucking lived in a... It says there's three units, so either it's like a duplex Ooh. or like a... What do they call them? Townhouse? Yeah, that where they're thickens, all connected. that thickens the plot if it's three and not yeah. two. Um, but he, it's like a townhouse duplex kind of thing, and he went and double tapped his neighbor's wall and routed his uh, electrical meter to his neighbor's. Yeah. So... And it was literally hidden behind a picture frame. Like right. the dude That's at any point so... could have moved this and seen it. That's um, so. And so it was something where the people moved in and the picture was already on the wall. Possibly. That's what I would have. That's what my headcanon is. That's yeah. how I envision it. Is like the picture was already on the wall and well, they just walked in. Like they moved into the house and it was. Well, because yeah, he had to have maybe... some kind of knowledge of where the picture was. Right. 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 Or he got super lucky when he was doing this. Uh, well, my other case scenario would be that he has the keys for their apartment so one day when they weren't home he just walked in and tapped it and then did or that. has at least been in before enough to know where right, right, right. i'm assuming he's because he's an electrician he knows yeah, where if, the pictures where, are if, no where the <laughs> he knows where all the pictures are gonna be <laughs> no, like. he, when, when you're an electrician you get that like x-ray vision where you can see through the walls like oh that's a picture that's right called that electrician intuition <laughs> he knows where he needs to tap and he gets invited over to their house and there happens to be a picture on the wall right where there's a possible spot where he could tap and he goes, I'm going to do it. Well, let me let me say this. At least in America, meter tampering is a felony. 
Yeah. Like yeah. you go to jail for, for tampering with your meter. Yeah. Uh, your gas or electric. Um, so like he got off real fucking lucky because he has he, they they took him to court. They found out they found out because the family that was paying his electric bill <sighs> like quadrupled their electric <clears throat> yeah. bill. Yeah, probably. Uh, to the point where they were like taking up second jobs. Their 19 year old daughter went to work to help pay the bills like they didn't know why the bill had went up this much. Mm -hmm. And I believe they brought it to their landlord and tried to figure out what was going on. And that's when they discovered that. Yeah, the landlord's like oh, the guy downstairs I hasn't been paying an electric bill. I don't know. That's so crazy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, the, so the, like the guy downstairs hadn't been paying the electric bill. And they found out the, you know, the whole rig with the meter and everything. They took him to court and he was ordered to pay back the uh, 4,000 euros um, that he owed, which was, I guess, 40 euros a month, which, again, not even like a bad punishment. Right. Just it's paying back a, what he owes. Such a slap on the wrist. Right. Yeah. Just 4,355 US dollars. And to the best part, he uh, continued to live next to him. They were yeah. still neighbors. Didn't move. That's so crazy. Why? I you bet would they have could to... have gotten like a restraining order. Well, at that point, I'm telling my landlord, like, yo, you kicking this dude out or am I? Like, <laughs> wh which one of us is going to have to kick him out? You would think the landlord would want him out. Right. If he's <laughs> tapping your house that you are the, unless I was, when you first presented this mm -hmm. style, I was under the impression that the electrician was also the landlord and Wait, it was a double. No, is no. it a condo? It's because yeah. you can own a condo. It sounds like it's a no, he's renting. It sounds okay. like it's a duplex, and then so it's just two people that live yeah. there, and the landlord lives somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, he just owns the property. Yeah, these are okay. two renters. Okay, okay, um, okay. Yeah, get that guy the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to my landlord's house and being like, yo, get this fucker <laughs> out of here. Yo, why is my electric bill quadrupled? He's tapping your house that you own you are letting him yeah, live here right right um yeah if, again if, yeah right like you said if i'm the landlord i'm suing too at that point right because like yeah the family should sue and all that ended up paying or all that ended up being brought about from the court case was he had to pay back what the family had paid which i'd be suing for more by right the way. right if i'm uh, the damages, family i'm suing time for lost more. because yeah. they had to well no I'm, if i'm the landlord i'm suing for damages because you have done something illegal you've, in my fucking you've building tampered, i'm renting yeah you've tampered in a space that's not even you don't even pay the rent for yeah that's yeah. not even your space if they were to take off the picture and there was like this meter in the wall yeah the landlord could have said that that was their fault and sued them. Well, he's, he's yeah. tampering with the other people's uh, rental unit. He's tampering with his in a way that I'm sure isn't on the lease agreement. Yeah, right. Because uh, he doesn't own this property. Right. And he's also tampering with uh, the electric, which is uh, a, a city utility. So, like... The city uh, Which, soon. again, yeah, you can't install your own meter, yeah. to my knowledge. Like, you can't Don't even break the seal spice, off the meter. But... <laughs> hmm. That's how so, it yeah, should work. He's really getting off slap on the wrist huh they, there's a quote from his neighbor that said they're still they still remain neighbors but obviously they're not on particularly good terms yeah probably that not be a dude. Real awkward interaction moving forward like, hey neighbor how you doing oh. imagine you get locked out imagine you get locked out and you're like hey can i uh can you please uh can you, can you help me out here yeah, you, you got my in? spare key <laughs> oh god i hate that shit so much <laughs> that reminds me of this is a deep cut one of the first trailers for Gotham City Impostors, which was wow. like a free to play Great game, by the way. Yeah, free to play. Like, uh, it wasn't a hero shooter, but it was like a PvP. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the first trailer, it's two neighbors who live across from each other in an apartment, and they both leave, and one works for Batman and one works for Joker. And then at the end of the day, they're both coming back up to their apartments, and they see that they're both still wearing like remnants of the yeah. Joker in the back, and then they like go at each other. It's like that. <laughs> So that's my niche reference for the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gotham City Impostors was a great. I played a shit yeah. ton of that game, dude. Loved Gotham City Impostors. I wish that was still a thing that was yeah. uh, available online. Cool game. Um, yeah. Apparently, they've expressed uh, willingness before to have this guy removed or kicked out of the uh, lease for some reason. Because the council has been trying to get him removed, and the so is the landlord in cahoots with this guy. Is it an HOA? Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck HOAs. <laughs> Fuck every HOA. The neighbor said, "We thought he was gonna, uh, we thought he was all right, quiet, just a nice guy." I feel really disappointed. <laughs> I'd feel more than disappointed. Like I'm, I'm also kind of mad at the neighbors who were being stolen from because they're just like, "Damn, that's a shame." 
No, dude, you've been paying yeah. like quadruple the electric right. bill. I don't You're understand why action. he didn't like question the electric bill. Yeah, I wonder how long. I mean, because that's that's a pretty steep fucking increase. That's uh, that's not a cheap bill to, to go it's up such to four thousand euros. It's such a British solution. Like, oh well, John just has to pay four thousand. We're good. That's why the Beatles broke up. Pish posh, you know. All right, fucking buddy. I'm suing him. <laughs> I'm suing him for everything. I'm taking his. Con- I'm I'm owning both apartments. Yeah. Why the fuck? Once the bills got that high, wasn't something done? No, he just like they had ca- his daughter get a yeah, second job. They got right. more jobs to right. help pay for them, and they didn't like. Oh man, we should probably stop using well, electric this much. Yeah, and and you would think like after the first month or two, they're like, all right, let's turn off the lights yeah. in the bathroom and remove the light in the fridge. Right, right. Yeah. Like let's do a little. Uh, what the fuck's going on in Britain? <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of that country. Yeah, dude. Well, um, don't trust British electricians. Don't I trust guess. the Brits. Yeah, don't, don't trust, trust the Brits. They say, "Oh, you're free. You can live with us. We promise." They're lying. I promise. I, there I, was a war. I really hope this dude's actively trying to stay in his apartment after this. Yeah, <laughs> this is my land. Yeah, <laughs> this is my Become, property. Becomes a squatter in his fucking apartment. <laughs> Just doesn't move anything. Yeah. <laughs> Rehooks up the fucking meter. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Again. Does it from like the other house? Does it with their gas next? <laughs> Dude, yeah. Why isn't the landlord like taking more action? Yeah, dude? that's the so landlord strange. really dropped the ball here. So strange. And ve- again, like you said, very strange for them to be like, "Oh, I will." That electricity bill is more high again this year, isn't it? you know. <laughs> and then they just like keep paying it. Yeah. Why? Those are some great neighbors. Yeah. I would I would take yeah. advantage of those neighbors if they can't fucking I figure mean, out that they're not running up their electric bill. What is it? Four thousand quid, four thousand pounds? Euro, I believe. Four thousand euros? Four thousand monopoly money. Some pokey bucks. But like how much is that? How many months is that? Right. That's of what electricity. I'm yeah. You know? Is that like four months? Is no. that it says forty euros per month. Wait. Yeah, no, no, that's what he owes. He has to pay oh. back forty euros a month. His, Maybe that's what it was. Well, that's what the court, yeah. So it's that's he, what the court agreement was that he has to repay this four thousand with. So he, forty a month. He was given more than eight years to repay the forty euros per month. That's so that's fucking ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> this dude. They didn't even give him away. a slap on the wrist. They kissed his wrist. Yeah. and said fairly well. <laughs> Tootaloo. <laughs> you have eight. Was he like unemployed? How was he renting? Yeah. Why does he need eight years? <laughs> the fuck's going on in britain also who's gonna fix the fucking apartment now la la land over there they just don't give a shit about anything i bet the landlord asked him to fix it because he's an electrician <laughs> he hired him the <laughs> landlord's like boy bloody shame in it <laughs> the, the moving fucking, on the fucking dude's like hey i know a good electrician i'll uh i'll get him to fix that for i don't know four thousand euros <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah right around the uh, price range of four thousand euros dude that'd be a crazy turnaround <laughs> he fucking disassembles the, his own meter for yeah. four thousand euros <sighs> what's why all i'm saying is like if you know a trade like this felony yeah. felony has got to be real easy to commit yeah like ah. th- I, I know how to steal cable from my neighbor but like it's 2024 <laughs> that I, um... doesn't help me <laughs> I when I worked at a trucking company, they um they had a stint where catalytic converters were stolen mm-hmm. on their lot, and as soon as we got back, it was like there was the west lot and the east lot, and as soon as we got back to the east lot from the west lot, which had all the cars that had, or had all the trucks that had the converters uh cut stolen. out of them, we were like all questioned to high hell, and it didn't dawn on me like going back but then there i was like oh yeah any mechanic probably could Could have have just taken the could have and would have done this you know yeah that's crazy yeah imagine being the guy who has to service the trucks and then you're just cutting out the cats on the side right 216-859-8699 i've got a bucket full of catalytic converters if you want to buy one (laughs) The Artificial Intelligence Podcast is the only show written, voiced, and scored entirely by AI. All episodes are available now on stylesribbleradio.com. Ever wonder what your favorite radio hosts talk about off-air? Almost every time I've gone to a casino, I've finished up. 
and that's and, and like, like I, I never lose money so and, and then like, I, I clean myself up and i leave the bathroom and I <laughs> gamble. regardless you can catch off air recast weekdays at 3 p.m on wsrr radio or listen to new episodes as they drop the first and last tuesdays of each month i'm gonna call the weather number and see if it still do works it. do it <laughs> Hey, Style here to remind you that StylesRebelRadio.com is a group of free content creators. And because of that, you may have noticed that we don't do a lot of ad spots between our breaks, and that's intentional. We're not here to shill out to off-brand cereal or promote crappy mobile games. We strive to give you quality, professional content without the repetitive marketing. That being said, if you like what we do and want to support the shows, you can always click the link in the Spotify description to help support us for as little as 99 cents a month. Now back to the broadcast. Sorry, I'm just uh, squeaking my joints. I was about to say, your elbows were really loud. Yeah, I can Just can't. so you know. It's all that. I got pancreas arthritis. I had WD40. I also yeah. have WWE 14 here somewhere. Really? Play that. I prefer SVR 07. Dude, I prefer SVR 08, but we can get into that Whoa. later. It's the best game ever made. Better than Halo, better than Leopard Dead 2. Sorry, I'm right. 216-859-8699 is the number to text in. If you want to agree with me, I know you do. <laughs> you can make sure you take us with you wherever you go, in your car, on your speaker, your headphones, wherever you want to play us. Anything that connects to Bluetooth gets you with WSRRradio.com is the website. Or download the live 365 app and pair us with all those great devices. If you're running Windows, you might want to make sure which version you're running, because apparently over the week there was a little bit of issue with Windows. I always run Windows 97. Um, That's the way to go. Yeah. I'm a Vista guy myself. Ah, nice. <laughs> I had a, there was an old Flash game on Newgrounds Games mm -hmm. that was called Windows Doors. I don't remember mm. what the fuck it was. I just mm. remember the name of it, and I thought it was really funny when I was like eight. I, I should not have been on Newgrounds at remember... eight. Cool Math Games had Burger Time, and I would play Burger Time. Like legit Burger Time? Like the arcade game yeah. Burger Time. Really? But it was just on Cool Math Games. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. That was actually my first introduction to Burger Time, and then I saw the arcade, and I was like, no way! Cool they Ma made it! I was like, Cool Math Games? <laughs> How'd they do that? Yeah, the Cool Math Games arcade cabinet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, what's going on with Windows, Jules? So, Windows... Well, not technically Windows, but... Well, Windows... Are they open, closed... <laughs> Yeah, also I'd like Crack to say one. I'd like to preface by saying I have pretty much I thought I knew a little bit. You guys have filled me in that I know nothing about this window <laughs> situation. So please. Well, so when you buy a computer, uh, uh. it's it's one of the like the three programs you can install to run as your operating system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um I use uh ice cream operating system. That's not nope. Remember when Android used to call their OS's different like treats did they yeah when android was like an actual competitor to iphone their o android's os would be called like ice cream mint chocolate chip are you like, serious yeah swear to god yeah they had like a a cookies one that's that, so awesome yeah what the fuck are we doing now yeah all right it's called the ui now by the way droid droid, mm -hmm. droid. Yeah. so anyway roger, roger. <laughs> microsoft security network crowdstrike different company mm -hmm. um they <laughs> I believe they put a Falcon sensor security software into the Microsoft update. So they just put in, to, for layman's terms, they put in a new software, a new security software into this update. Yes. So they were looking to update their security software. However, they did not test it. It was a bad code. Right. And every, most of all microsoft users were met with the blue screen of death mm. yeah so I have, I have a couple questions off the bat but again just general overview it's mm -hmm. not microsoft itself it is crowdstrike is the name of the company which yes. is like their security team that yeah they, it's, it's so like okay. a cyber security network okay they, okay their own personal vpn cool cool <laughs> yeah pretty much um but crowdstrike also works with a bunch of other things that aren't just microsoft so like programs uh companies websites so like a lot of banking websites so 911 operators didn't you say they worked with amazon yes, yes. okay yeah no there was a bunch of, uh so they work with a lot of yeah. big big like companies. separate companies right yes. right uh, alti pro like the app people use to clock in for corporate mm -hmm. companies uses it i know uh but there's there's a bunch of like companies that also use this uh, CrowdStrike, it's called. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, for their own cybersecurity. Mm. So, yeah, they put out this update and apparently bugged the whole system to where 
Nothing was able to go through. I learned about it. Um, well, first it was reported that a bunch of flights couldn't take off. I, I saw that. I know, like that was a big that was headline. Over two thousand six hundred flights were canceled, and not, not over nine thousand flights were delayed. So, what was the reason they couldn't use flights? Basically, because they couldn't get into their network. All of the computers were down, so they couldn't actually scan people's passes. They right. couldn't get I'm them. I'm just saying that's a load of manifest. bullshit. That's a load of bullshit. We had planes long before we had technology like this. Yes, but we could have fucking flown the plane. Everything has changed over, so it was more of a security risk. If I was getting on that plane, I would have thrown a fit. I'm just e- saying. They did. I yeah, <laughs> I believe a lot. I saw a video of some girl, and she was doing some kind of crazy dance because the guy told her like. We have to cancel all flights. I'm so sorry. And, and then she starts freaking out, and the guy's like, "I'm not dealing with this." <laughs> and he waves, he wags. His hand and says, I'm not like, dealing with done. this. We're done. Yeah, he, yeah. He says, "We're done." And then the lady goes, "Oh, we're done." And she does like a little sidestep. I love. She I love him out. R slash public freakout on Reddit. That is a good one. Mwah. Top tier crazy people. But yeah, a bunch of flights couldn't take off. They're delayed or canceled. And a lot of airports themselves they, shut down. Yeah. Then it came out that nine one one operators couldn't get into their system. Oh my which yeah, that's a terrible oversight. Yeah, if, brutal. If at any point like you can't place a nine one one call or dispatch nine one one emergencies and, and units because of Windows, that would have been a perfect issue. time to that's do all the murdering. Hey, listen, my first thought was like, if anyone's gonna <sighs> get past TSA, it's right now. Now. Yes, um, I'm running. Exactly. I'm running onto that plane. But like, <gasps> I, that, that's the more like. So banks shut down. We had cops that weren't able to be dispatched. We had oh planes that weren't able to take off. Gas stations closed because pumps themselves run off security software because oh of credit my cards. Gosh. Yeah. So and, and a lot of uh, just credit card machines couldn't function because they run off no the security software. Gas. Yeah. So like, we shouldn't live in a society. We do live in a society. Fuck. I hate that. We shouldn't live in a society where. One cybersecurity company going down tanks almost every industry. Dude, I mean... Including th- our law enforcement. I feel like that's something that we have like seen in media yeah. and we've talked at like an EMP or anything like that. If we get our internet wiped, we're fucked yeah. as a society. But that's we the thing. We are fucked. When we talk about it, it's always that like, oh, you know, if there's a nuclear strike or if there's an EMP or if, you know, there's some kind of cyber strike from another country, this is one program that had one error right. from the people who make the program. Right. And imagine the largest global IT outage in history. Imagine really? yes. the multitude of other problems that mm-hmm. could occur if anyone decided to do any, you know, like, right. it's so... I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, this this is one of those things that goes to show. And, like, I also think of the Texas power grid yeah. outage that was, like, was that a year ago now or something I like that? close to two or three now. Yeah, but, like, that shut down that whole state, mm-hmm. you know? Like, mm-hmm. and then just last week we were Water- talking about the Whataburger. Yep. The Whataburger. Like, we are so easily, if if three telephone poles get knocked down within yeah. a 500-mile you know, vicinity. That town is fucked. Yeah. Well, well I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, but yeah. we talked about, I think we talked about this uh, at the beginning of last year, mm-hmm. but I know Tesla made a statement. I think Ford followed it up and then there were a uh, Hyundai, Hyundai was Hyundai, one of them. Hyundai? Hyundai was Hyundai. one of them. Uh, but, Umayimu, you still don't know what that means, do you? You still know what that means, do you? I don't remember okay um but it was a big thing that they're going to remove am radios in in new cars past 2024 and so now there's a bill to stop uh the ban of am radios and vehicles and interesting the reason for it was oh no one listens to am radio anymore and it's outdated and and all this other stuff and there's there's political reasons behind it but also something that a lot of these companies didn't understand and i don't think a lot of people understand is that EA, EMS or EAS, emergency broadcast systems, mm-hmm. emergency alert <clears throat> systems uh, for tornadoes, for weather, for amber alerts, all run off AM radio yeah, still yeah. to this day. Um, so, <clears throat> like, even if you're listening to Sirius XM and you hear, you know, an, an amber alert or, or if you're listening to WSR radio and you hear some kind of weather alert or something like that, right. it's from an AM station that's being converted to digital because of how reliable AM radio still is because it's not digital it's it's hardware right. and analog right. uh long wave radio so it can withstand things like that right so if you know god forbid uh, a security strike or an emp or something like that did happen 
that's what we'd have to turn to because we wouldn't be able to, to turn on Fox 8, right? right? Right, right, right. It's sad that we now know we are not capable of handling an IT disaster. I mean, I again, for me, I feel like the Texas power outage thing was, or the power grid thing was like, it was one of those, like, I can see it coming around the corner, you know, like. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. <laughs> that time keeps dragging on. Is that is that the man himself? It's the man in black. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, Where I just you? feel like the Texas thing was like, hey guys, if you ever lose anything, yeah. you're all fucked. Yeah. Like, if one of the biggest states, if the biggest state in the country can, if that happens to that, mm -hmm. what happens to the whole country? You know. I think this whole thing is a little sus, and I, I don't know why we're not looking more into it, if <clears throat> yeah. I'm being honest. And, like, the, the cyber strike guy literally just, like, made a statement. Crowd strike? Like, yeah, sorry. Crowd strike guy said, like, oh, I'm sorry. It was on us. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> My like, B, LOL. Why aren't we just lambasting him a little bit more? Yeah. Right. Because uh, that was a shitty week. It started on Well, he should Friday. be fired. Right? Like, yeah, for sure. Someone what, should be fired. What what is What was the protocol that wasn't taken? Was it Was the code not tested on a private server tested. or something that's that, yeah what? that's what it seems like like did they just never test the code on a private server it seems like they did one round of of coding yeah. and they were like perfect you know perfect job done Send you know? Send i was it. thinking maybe they started using uh ai oh my and, god to write code <laughs> to write oh code and it fucked god. it up here's my That'd be terrifying and they just trusted it because it was here's, artificial right. intelligence. here's what i can't wrap my head around so it, it affected Windows primarily because Apple doesn't run off uh, CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. um, Linux doesn't run off CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. It's primarily a modern Windows thing because, again, there are businesses that avoided all of this because they haven't updated their system since Windows 95. So interesting. Yeah. Such an interesting caveat. Which, that's also scary that companies are still running on Windows 95, but it turned out to be a good thing. Well, it's, see, in my eyes, I see that as like old mom and pop if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, I'm talking. Things. No, these are major businesses. Mm. This is like Southwest Airlines ran on Windows 95. So yeah, it's it, kind of yeah. No, these are major businesses. Um, which is also, I mean, when we talked about uh, Y2K. That's mm -hmm. also why so many places were affected during Y2K because they didn't update their systems. Right. So we're really repeating that again. Right. Um, but, Interesting. Yeah. So a lot of companies that ran on older Windows or Linux or Apple weren't affected by this it was all in everywhere in the news it's reported as a microsoft issue is what you're seeing because mm -hmm. it caused uh the blue screen of death for mm -hmm. for windows 11 and 10 right um here's my thing i was using windows that night studio runs on windows nothing ever went down now is it because it was a windows update i believe so, that yes. put it in place now here's my follow-up to that we need to fucking be mad at Windows for auto updating. If you have a computer, if if you have a computer that's on regularly, you'll notice there's a automatic Windows update scheduled like every other week now, mm -hmm. and it is impossible to turn those off. I had to turn it off on the Studio PC because it runs automation twenty four seven right. live three sixty five. You can always tune in on wsrradio.com. Um, but it runs automation twenty four seven, and every couple weeks. It would shut down and we'd go to dead air and we'd be kicked to the cloud because the, the whole system re restarted right. and killed all the programs and killed the software that was running. And I'd have to come back in here and reprogram all the automation. And I had to go in several different times mm. to turn off auto updates. And it's a nine step process to turn oh off auto gosh. updates because you have to go into the computer's actual code and tell it that do not run auto ridiculous. updates, do not uh, surpass it, do not have a priority for it, do not notify for it. That's so insane. Back on like Windows 7, you could just turn off notifications, turn off auto updates, and that was it. And even that was something what we shouldn't have done. You should be able to, when you start, a fresh copy of Windows, opt in or out of auto updates. And that's right, not a thing right, they right, give right. you anymore. And we're seeing the detrimental side of it. Like right. we should also be as as mad as we should be at CrowdStrike and that someone should be fired and something should be held accountable for this. Mm -hmm. We need to be mad at Windows because this is the way Windows operates now. Everyone gets one drive. Everyone automatically saves to the cloud on Windows and you have to pay for more storage now. Everyone automatically gets auto updates and it's going to shut down your computer once a week and it's going to update you to the newest Windows even if you don't want it. So see, I don't know how it works, but is it like a server thing where they don't want to keep old Windows servers up and running if... See, I don't, I don't fully... Because I mean, it's an OS, so right. it's not... 
on like it, it wouldn't i i would say yes to that however i know someone that still well, obviously windows 95 still runs right and i know someone that just recently installed the copy of windows 95 and is running it mm. so like clearly they have old os is running i think vista might be shut down for good is it like a they picked and choose which ones are Maybe. highest demand which ones are still running like the highest active you know count active users. maybe yeah the yeah. highest active users we keep those ones alive and then we fiddle off the rest it could well be but i also think a lot of it is too um you know they're constantly trying to push one drive they're constantly trying to push their own antivirus and security shit too mm. and the more they can update it the more that shit comes with it right um i i, I think a lot of it is just trying to get you automatically into things that you didn't ask for and by you know continuously updating it you're just re-enrolling in it. Right, right, right. I wanted to read uh, Southwest Airlines' tweet really quickly. Yeah. Uh, when all this went down, uh -huh. they said, well, 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 <laughs> look who needs old self Southwest Airlines now because all of our systems run on a single Commodore 64 in a warehouse in Arlington. That's <laughs> terrifying. Go to hell. That's <laughs> terrifying that they run on a Commodore 64. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Warm I'm trusting suit. the outage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fly blind. It's yeah, cool. <laughs> that's that's terrifying, man. <laughs> but that's my, that was my other point. Like we used to have pilots that flew planes. They didn't need fucking windows. Right. No, it I will say it is very interesting. I know someone who went to aviation school and um like in college they would just have a full flight simulator in their room. At Microsoft all times. Flight Simulator. Yeah, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And like it was one of those things where they're like, okay, I'm ready to like I did my in plane or I did my yeah. in planes. I'm I'm, I'm ready to fly now. Right. Like, buddy. You've never been in a plane. You were you were <laughs> flying a computer. You're playing a video game. It was a little Fortnite, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It, I, I did not know that it was just like, well, you you are good yeah. enough to do the simulator, so you're good enough to do the real thing. Well, you want to know the scarier part of that? Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's like a third time I've brought this up, but when I worked at GameStop, people would come in to buy Microsoft Flight Simulator, and we never carried like, because it's only a digital game, so yeah. you can only get the code. Um, but we never carried that in store, so and naturally wouldn't we wouldn't carry like the hardware for right, the, right, right. the harness and cockpit in store right. but people would come in and look for it and they'd mm. pull it up online and say look i want to buy the whole cockpit assembly and i want to buy a copy of microsoft flight simulator mm -hmm. for leisure just regular people are doing this and buying it and that's what we're training people on yeah a, a, a product that anybody could buy if they wanted to spend yeah, the money right I, and that's exactly what i thought of too like because i remember going into his his little apartment room and seeing it and being mm. like whoa you're going he's like yeah whoa, you're a gamer <laughs> yeah yeah you're a, a hardcore gamer but he was like you want to try it <laughs> and so i did it yeah like walked into his room i was like whoa he's like hop in <laughs> you're ready you're ready ace <laughs> like oh, okay and i just did it i crashed the plane but like <laughs> i'm not ready but i did it which I mean, this isn't a new thing either we talked about um anyone can do it Anyone could do. Anyone right. can fly a plane. Anyone can fly a plane. No, Microsoft not, Flight Simulator. Hey, not everyone can be a, a stewardess, though. No, that's that's really that's hard. That's harder than Harvard. Yeah. Um, but when we talked about uh, MH370, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370, mm -hmm. there was a whole section of that where it talked about the pilot and his however many hours previously on a flight, not Microsoft, but on a flight yeah, simulator. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. mapping out the route that he took yeah. on a flight simulator. I remember so, like, that. this has been a canon thing for right. a long time. Now. Right. And I get it. It's probably not the safest thing to put a plane in the air with someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Right. But we clearly had some kind of way to teach before. Yeah, look at the fucking Wright brothers. How did they do it? They just they they built it, that and they're Kitty like, Hawk, "Well, baby. we we gotta we gotta make this thing work. <laughs> we gotta make this thing go up <laughs> and down safely. Yeah, yeah, and back down That's the hard safely. Part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it's there had to have been a way to do this before Flight Simulator, before Microsoft Flight yeah, Simulator, which probably but, came out in like ninety five. Yeah, or the problem 90, is, you know, as a society. We have gotten. We do live in a society. <laughs> we have gotten too comfortable with technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. technology now rules the world, yeah. and we cannot function without it because most of the people in the world now have not functioned without technology. I'm glad that you see that. I'm glad that we all see that because there are a lot of people who just fucking don't see that. They're phone zombies, and they're oh yeah, you know. 
All right. What's what's going on with this flight simulator? <laughs> um, yeah, I would probably crash plane if I was flying one. I just can't believe it was the largest IT outage well, like, yeah, you, global. You had banks that went out. You had yeah. fucking... It, that's the thing, too. Is like, it's not just flights. Because right, right, if right. it was just flights, it'd be like, okay, that's inconvenient. Um, and there were still flights, obviously, like Southwest Airlines, that yeah. still were able there to were plenty, operate. Plenty. Of- it was just the majority weren't. Imagine, but like it was banks, it was yeah. police scanners, it, everything. Or, uh, it was everything. supermarkets. It was gas. You couldn't pump gas. Like society shut down. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I, I sent this on Snapchat the other day to a few people. Um, I went to Tractor Supply. To buy screwdrivers yesterday. Mm-hmm. Can't find any of my fucking flathead screwdrivers for some reason. I'm like, all right, I'll go up there and buy some screwdrivers. So I walked in the tractor supply, bought screwdrivers, and I had cash on me because I, I got a production check and I cashed mm-hmm. it. Or someone paid me for production in, in cash. Um, and my total was exactly $13. And I paid in exactly $13 cash. And it was the most satisfying thing I have done all year. We need to get back to that. Whoops. Take that right Just there. As, as often as I use my credit card, we need to get back to that being a standard because of things like this, where I can walk up to a gas station and say, I need $15 on pump three. Here it is. You don't need to fucking virtually put it in. Pump my gas. Yeah. As soon as I read, like on the 19th, I work third shift. So I was awake as this was happening. Mm-hmm. And... um. As soon as I heard banks were affected, I had the realization that money is not real. None of that money is available. Yeah. What do I do? Dude, that <laughs> that clocked for me when I realized what a bank actually was and yeah. what it does. You're just kind of trusting it. You're just trusting it that it has someone else's money mm-hmm. and then yeah. you'll just use that money. And and your money went somewhere else a long time ago as soon as you put it in there. Mm-hmm. That was such a fleeting, scary concept to me that our bank or that our money is just <laughs> Yeah, for it's sure. It's just in the air. Someone else used it and then we're using someone else's money technically. I so then I was like, money is just fake. Money is just fake unless you're holding it. And even then, it's still kind of fake. Well, I mean, not to get too uh, historical or political here, but hey. I think it was 1973 we came off the gold standard. So we literally have nothing that backs the American dollar. It is actually meaningless other than the fact that we are saying it is worth something. Yeah. So like, it's, it's not actually worth anything. And like you said, yeah, we're just kind of trusting each other that we're putting money in. If all of us in a city... Just even even in a city, a local bank stopped putting money in the bank, and I went to to get money out of that bank. It wouldn't you work. Wouldn't, you wouldn't have your your money. They'd say sorry. Yeah, we, we don't, don't have your money. We don't have your money. And if it's not FDIC backed, you're not getting your money back either. Right. Right. Here's the moral of the story: bury your money in the backyard. Yes. <laughs> yes. And don't trust fucking... anybody. <laughs> don't trust anybody. All right. I was gonna say don't trust online servers to run your national security or flight systems, but hey, if you're listening live on the internet radio today, two one six eight five nine eight six nine nine. Spotify, Google, TuneIn, Anchor, Amazon, iHeart, you name it, we're on the Rebel Podcast. 10 a.m. Eastern every Wednesday, but of course it's live. You catch it right here on WSRR Radio, 5 p.m. every Monday, and you can take us with you wherever you go with the free Live 365 mobile app. Just found this out the other day. Hmm. Uh, If you have an Android, probably an iPhone thing too, Mm -hmm. there's new updates that turns on battery optimization automatically. Mm. So if you are having any issues with the Live 365 app, cutting off while your phone's asleep or shut down or anything like that, just turn off the battery optimization. Take this with you wherever you go. You can pair it with your Bluetooth. Uh, Car stereo, speakers, smart TVs. If you have a Roku TV, you can listen to Live 365 and WSRR Radio on there as well. Of course, WSRR Radio is the homepage for all of our great content, you can get articles, blogs, exclusives, and podcasts like Shaney's Off Air. That uh, is the show that I am, I am the host of. We're uh, recording new batch episodes tonight, so... Yeah, buddy! Fresh ones down the pipeline. They come out the first and last Tuesdays of each month on all major streaming platforms, and you can catch replays of them at 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. on WSRR Radio. Of course, for the full schedule, showtimes, and more, WSRRRadio.com. You can get all of our socials there, including our Discord server. You can chat with us 24 7 365 as well with categories like conspiracy theories, like liminal spaces, Spider Man, wrestling, memes, you name it. We're on it. WSRR Radio's Discord server. Of course, that number is 216 859 8699 if you want to text in this 216. 8598699 text in any 
time or leave a voicemail for any of your favorite artists on WSRR Radio or even for True Volt Escapades. It's the Fallout centric radio drama that comes out every Wednesday or every weekday, Ooh. 10 p.m. on WSRR Radio. And until next time, I've been Radio's Rebel DJ Styles. My right, Shaney. Bye, everyone. On the board is Jules. Uh, bye. And for all the preppers out there, peace. <laughs>